Today, we're going to take a hike with an old friend and a few dogs. We'll see some beautiful fall colors and hear some great outdoor stories. So stick around. Welcome to Windows to the Wild. I'm Willem Lang. Several years ago, I met a writer and a storyteller and his dog. We hiked together and became friends. The dog was named Atticus, and following right behind him was the storyteller, Tom Ryan. Every year since then, Tom calls, we get together and take another hike. Well, today, we're at it again. <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> good to see you, my it friend. It is a customary pleasure to see you. You ready to hike today? I am ready. I'm ready to take you to a pretty place. <laughs> good. Sawyer Pond. Sawyer Pond, and it's a simple trail, uh -huh. and you can tell by the foliage, it's perfect. Yeah, and the sky, very nice, too, following the rain. Good. Two uh, gentlemen in the autumn of their lives, in the autumn season. Thank you. I appreciate it. I thought I was farther along than that. Well, I was being kind. <laughs> yes, you were. Okay. Why don't we uh, cross the bridge? And, and Metaphorically, the, I, or <laughs> as, it, as it were. Yes. The river stinks. Go to, okay. And go to Sawyer Pond. Okay. okay. You ready, Emily? You guys ready? Ready, Kiki? Oh, yeah. They're Here's ready. Sam. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Okay. We're off to Sawyer Pond. For me, it's a new destination. The trail begins at the end of Sawyer River Road, just south of Crawford Notch. It's a 3.1 mile round trip. It looks like a pretty easy hike. Today it's going to be really easy, at least for one of us. <laughs> um, but it's a three-mile hike, round trip, about 350 feet of elevation gain. Beautiful, as you can tell, foliage is the best time of year to be here. And I'm really excited about showing it to Will. When we get to the end, there's going to be a beautiful cliffside on the other side of the pond. And um, for the bang for the buck, it's one of the most beautiful, simple hikes in the lights. Tom Ryan and I have been hiking buddies for about six years. We get together with our dogs. Each outing is a chance to explore a new trail and catch up. You're 84? 84, yeah. A lot of people 84 have trouble just getting around the house. Yeah. You're, you're staying active, you're traveling a great deal. <laughs> so what challenges do you have now with your body with hiking? Because you told me now you're only you and Kiki do about a mile and a half each day. Yeah, just about that, yeah. So the uh, most activity you're getting is when you do your shows. That's true. That's the most, yeah, that's the most strenuous. Now, what did we do last week? We went for a hike somewhere. Uh, I remember that Kiki was out like a light going home. And what about uh, you when you got home? <laughs> I got home. That's the big thing. <laughs> I don't want to go out like a light before I get there, see? <laughs> During the last couple of hikes, it was Tom who was tested. He was sick. We'd oftentimes stop in the middle of the forest and then just... Uh, this is from one of our previous hikes together. I, I always go back to Thoreau, and uh, this is a simple little place. It was a great place for Atticus and I to go uh, in between hikes, just for walks, yep. and still feel nature. One of the things about my health coming back is an appreciation of this stuff. I mean, till uh, July last summer, I didn't think I was going to be able to do a lot of these things, and I thought I only had about five years left. Yeah. But I find myself looking up here at the, the foliage, and it's like seeing it anew. Uh, and not to borrow from that old religious term, but a different way, I've been born again. Tom's love for the mountains came in midlife. He's a newspaper guy from Newburyport, Massachusetts. 
His brothers coaxed him to New Hampshire's White Mountains, and that's all it took. Seeing that this kind of thing existed only two hours away from Newburyport, and I went from being a little city dweller who loved coffee houses and restaurants and City Hall. Which well, aren't bad, I mean, except for City Hall. <laughs> <laughs> to, um, I, I couldn't get my, I couldn't get enough. I became addicted yeah. to this stuff yeah. and the quiet. And I think one of the things that helped me with the mountains is after being in a town for a small town of 18,000 people and knowing everyone's business for 11 years, there wasn't a person walking down the street as a newspaper editor, the only person in the paper, that I didn't know about something about everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, um, so what do you survive? <laughs> <laughs> it is sometimes when, when it was some of the stuff I wrote, but uh, I realized <coughs> that it was constant noise for 11 years. Yep. And then when we got up here, the shock of the quiet was addicting. <laughs> Hello there, young fella. Hi, buddy. Not at all. How are you? See, I got, a, I got a treat for you. First time I met Tom, he was following his miniature schnauzer, Atticus, the namesake of his best-selling book, uh, the first time we hiked was the Hedgehog Trail. That's right. With Atticus. Yeah, dear Atticus. I was in better shape then. You were not in better shape then, as I recall. I was in healthy you, shape, you, yeah, uh, but okay, not inside yeah. healthy. Hiking healthy, but not inside healthy. Uh -huh. And you had Ida. Oh, that's right. Yes, I did. That, that, a lot of things have changed for both of us since then, eh? Both I had to go on without changed. Atticus, and you had to go on without Ida. Oh, God. And we were talking in the parking lot. You talked about um, one of the things you're dealing with. I asked you how the health was, and you said loneliness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, getting out and seeing people just seems like too much trouble sometimes, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go to that, you know. Uh, but, um, you know, so I go or I don't. And if, if I go, well, okay. But then I got to leave her home half the time, so. And she's your you know. main squeeze. You don't like doing oh, that. Oh, yeah, 24 hours a day. How does she handle you? Leaving her. Well, she has a big Kong that I put peanut butter in. <laughs> and that helps. She, she loves that. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. And how does she uh, treat you when you get home? Oh, all over my legs. Yes, you. Or you jump up yeah. and down. You know, <laughs> let me out. Let me out. You know, she's, she's okay with that. There was another dog in Tom's life, Will. He could neither see nor hear, but he loved the mountains. He inspired Tom's second book. Uh, very arthritic, came from a kill shelter. Family had him for 15 years, dropped him off there down in Jersey. And uh, we ended up adopting him. Atticus and Will are both gone. Tom now hikes with Emily and Samwise. As you can see, Emily's the instigator. Uh, but I got her for Sam, but I think she needs us more than anything else now. She is really bonded between the two of us. So you saved, I said once, and I brought this up earlier, that uh, Ida saved you. Yeah. As Kiki? Safety. Well, she, uh, I got her about, oh, three months before I had died, maybe four months before I had died, and uh, it was the transition, you know. I took her up to see Ida every day, and that was fun, but Ida was upset because she knew she wasn't going to get to train her. And I just wasn't competent to do a thing <laughs> like that. See? <laughs> yeah. Right on cue, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she said, afraid. that's all right. I like my life the way it is. She was afraid you'd grow up rough and stupid. And look at you. You're bright as a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, and then she died, and, uh, you know, it was just the two of us. Once the kids left, there's just the two of us. And, but that house is uh, awful quiet. I mean, it was quiet anyways. Yeah. Because she uh, was yeah. in the... In the uh, it's quiet. No, no more TV on. 
Uh, it's just quiet. And what role does loneliness play in your life now? Loneliness. Who can tell? It's a big thing you these know. days. It don't is. Ever, it's, yeah. it's, it's the end thing, loneliness. <laughs> I just so not, thanks. But, uh, well, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Uh, I sit down and write a letter to somebody or an email or call somebody. No, I don't call. I hate to call. And you uh, only write certain people. You don't write to me. Would you like me to write you, Tom? Oh, I've written to you. <laughs> but the English was so bad, I hated to answer you because <laughs> I knew I couldn't do it without commenting. the smells. It's one thing that you can't show in your show. You can't uh, convey it, really. The sense of smell is the one sense you can't really portray. I enjoy hiking with Tom and the dogs, but today I want to find out how he's doing. So now you see what the trail's like. Plenty of roots, some rocks here and there, but... Yeah, mostly flat. One of the challenges I have is I told you I get dizzy still. Yeah. And it's yeah. something that happened when you consider the stroke, the yeah. heart attack, the uh, kidney failure, uh, the lung disease, everything that happened. Um, I can be sitting at the kitchen counter, standing at the kitchen counter, yeah. just chopping vegetables, and I'll start to get woos, and my blood pressure will just plummet. Really? And I have to go lay down. If I don't, I'll lay down without trying to. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, to yeah. It happens now that we're hiking 4,000 footers again, something I never thought I'd get back to. Yeah. Um, it happens on the steeper sections, and uh, I know to sit down because I feel it coming on. It comes in stages. Huh. My eyes start to swim. I start to get a little dizzy, and then the worst part is when you get when I get a little nauseous, then I'm going to pass oh, out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I made a mistake when I first started hiking when I got out of the hospital trying to go up, I passed out sitting on a log like this, Yeah. and I fell over and hit my head on a bigger log. Oh. And I had, I'm on a blood thinner, so I had all this blood running down <laughs> my face. <laughs> and I had to go down the steep trail, and this other hiker was coming up the trail. And this was when Samwise was first with me, and Samwise was ahead of me. And the other hiker saw Samwise and started petting him. And then he looked up at me, and he saw this blood. It looked like <laughs> Terry from the Stephen King movie. And the hiker said, uh, are you okay? And, of course, he sees this horrible thing. You, well, how do I look, you? And I said, all I said was, have you been up that trail yet? He said, no. And I said, it's horrible. Be careful. And I just kept walking. <laughs> That's great. Tom's return to New Hampshire's 4,000 footers brings him renewed joy. The joy of wild things, as Wendell Berry says in one of his poems, I'll send it to you. Mm. It's, uh, it's uh, the joy of wild things and you know, the idea of having taken so long to find this life, to appreciate these views, yeah. uh, to learn what it's like to be at peace with myself. I am happiest with the Vermont the trail now and I find now that I've learned to cook. I love cooking. Uh, the only problem is I love cooking so much I have to find other people to give it to at times because they overcook. <laughs> um, and uh, that has become one of my passions. But uh, I think what keeps me going is just the idea of peace. Yeah. I just so love this peaceful, quiet, stoic life, stoicism. Yeah. We were uh, not too far from you the other day. We were speaking in uh, Woodstock. Tom credits a change in diet for the healthy steps he's taken. I was already vegan. I wasn't eating meat, but I was eating Oreos, <laughs> drinking Coke. That's vegan. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, licorice Twist Star, um, uh, Ben and Jerry's vegan ice cream. Uh, none of it's healthy. Oh, that changed. No oils whatsoever, no nuts, no peanuts, no any kind of nuts, no nut butters. No olive oil. No oil. It, it yeah. ruins what's called the endothelial cells yeah. in your arteries. 
you know. Framingham Heart Study decided, uh, they've been doing it for decades, and they discovered that people who are healthy in their 50s, by the time they got to be in their 70s, were not, because they stand in American diet. And yeah. that's all about oils. And what oil does is it turns your arteries from Teflon into uh, Velcro. And that's where clots start. Wait a minute, how about butter? Same thing. Jeez. I don't do it. <laughs> all the fun stuff. You're, how am I going to fry eggs? <laughs> I know. Uh, I, you don't have eggs. Eggs. Oh, no, wait a minute. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll. So I, I bake every week now, and instead of using oils, I use applesauce. Yeah, I can see that. And yeah. I don't have nuts or seeds at all except for chia and flax seeds. Oh. And it's got me off of my medications. My, my resting heart rate is right around 50 beats per minute. Good. And I can hike again. Good. And you've got a dog to pet, too, if you need to bring your blood pressure down. And your respiration and heart right now. Well, you, if I, I need to do that, dog. I no, I think of you. <laughs> oh yeah, that that would raise your blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I pet Kiki and I go down to like 112 over 62. That's amazing. It you is. Know, from 120 over 75. Yep. So you know, I, I keep her around. <laughs> I, uh, so we're going to the right here, Willem. Yes. Kangamagus only 4.6. They make, make up my lunch. Kangamagus. I'm sorry. Kangamagus. Kangamagus. <laughs> so my recovery started because I missed this. So I just missed oh, being yeah. out here. Yeah, right. And I'm a lot less social than you are. My company I like to keep is trees. And um, uh -huh. I never feel lonely in nature, just like I never feel lonely even with a book. And I never feel lonely when I'm alone out here, especially I'm never alone with Samwise and Emily along, and before that was Atticus and Will. Yeah. Um, but nutrition is what helped me get going again, getting clean eating, beans and greens and berries, and um, watching the weight come off, and as the weight came off, to be able to do more and yeah. more. Yeah. And then I figured, what better place to start trying a 4,000 footer again than where I started and uh, with Atticus 15 years ago. <laughs> so we climbed Mount Garfield, our first 4,000 footer. That beautiful amphitheater that looks yeah. out over the Pemi Wilderness. Yeah. And uh, we made it up in three hours and I realized that's as fast as we ever made it up. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was stunned by that. And, that's gratifying, uh, yeah. That first week we did um, uh, five 4,000 footers. It was really uh, emotional. Uh, and what I did is I brought some of Addie's ashes with me. Uh, for me, my scatter ashes kind of place is Garfield, because it was the first place I went, the first place I fell in love with the mountains, and the first place that I saw Atticus sit and take in the view. <laughs> so I brought some of his ashes up with me, and I spread them out there. And, I spread some of my tears at the same time, and yeah. it's, it's really yeah. interesting to have this life with Samwise and Emily, yeah, and have had that life with him, and have them be so different. They uh, are, yeah, it's uh, amazing. Not just them different, but me different. You're and, different, too, yeah. And uh, having what the mountains mean to be is so different, but it, to me, it's um, my life felt incomplete without being able to go up after he and I went up for so long. I felt the passage of time when I was there without Atticus, and as there was Samwise and Emily, and um, not missing him, but feeling a bit fragile in my own existence. Yeah, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Did you try? About you. We're about a mile and a half into the hike, and sitting right in front of us is Sawyer Pond. Isn't that pretty? Ah, oh, yeah.
it's great. It's just, it's, it's nice to be out, at, you know, and, the, and to be in a new place. Yeah. I've never even heard of this place before. This is nice. And as your body changes, and because I went through changes before, where I was older than you with my health. Yeah. Um, so I revisited these places. I get to revisit them now as I'm healthier. The Forest Service did a really nice job with the lean-to. There are also six tent platforms along the shore. But oh, this yeah. is a perfect trail for people who don't oh, have yeah. the spunk they used to have or the flexibility. Yeah. Sleeping bag, stove, little groceries, mat, mattress, and you're all set. Well, I'm not spending the night with you out here. No, I'm not you, <laughs> but anybody, you know, you got a nice lean-to with a, with a tight roof. Yeah. Uh, very the nice. setting's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, there's no firewood to speak of. It's all been gleaned off the mm. forest floor, but what a beautiful spot. I like bringing you to some quiet places you've never been. This is one of them. Thank you. Yeah. The other was Pine Mountain. Do you remember that? Yeah. You know, it's one of, the th one of the things we do now. That was a big challenge for me that day. Yeah, yeah. And I actually got dizzy. Uh, Ooh. That was two years ago. Yeah. But now we do Pine Mountain four or five times a week just as a walk. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> we, and we park further down, so we do the four-mile loop uh, oh, nice. just as a nice walk. And we've been going every morning or night they're fully season to get the uh, the change of the seasons above the notch. It's been fantastic yeah. to have that freedom again. Nice. Go ahead, Em. The quiet and beauty invite Tom to contemplate about living at a time when he thought he might not be. Good job, Emmy. I yeah. don't know if I'll live longer, because at yeah. one point they thought five or ten years at the most. Yeah. But my quality of life is better. Yeah. And um, I actually keep something on me when I hike now that I didn't used to keep. Uh, a name and address and a phone number of a friend who will take in Sam, Eyes, and Emily in case something happens to me. Okay. Uh, and they are spoken for and will be taking care of the rest of their life. And I, I think I might have said this to you when we spread Will's ashes that day. Yeah. That Sam Wise was the first dog I ever had that I thought, he might outlive, outlive me. Outlive me, yeah. And yeah. then Emily came along, and I was like, well, there's two of them. That's gonna need <laughs> and uh, I found a wonderful family who loves dogs, and I trust, and they treat dogs as partners, as I do. So hopefully nothing will happen to that extreme. But, you know, I have to also tell you, one of the changes, one of the, one of the reasons I changed was watching Emily and how bonded she is to me. Samwise, you've seen, does his own thing. He used to be a street dog, right. and I think he'd be <laughs> fine without me. But Emily is tightly bonded like Kiki is with you. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I feel so guilty that Atticus died. And those five weeks I was in the hospital right before he died, I wasn't there for him when he was suffering. Uh, yeah. And there's nothing I can do about that. Um, but I thought, I'd kind of like to be around for these guys to the very end, if I can, instead of them having to be around there for me. And um, so, actually, even though I'm doing it for myself, uh, they were the, sort of the spark, my uh, emotional spark, to say, I want to live. <laughs> the bouts of dizziness are well worth it uh, to push myself to the point where not, I'm not in danger, but a little bit of discomfort is great for this kind of communion. I mean, this is stuff we can't get anywhere else, and you know, yep. once you lose it, you then never get it back. Well, <laughs> here we are once again at the end of a lovely hike, this time up to, what, Sawyer Pond, right? Yes. So it's time to uh, hit the trail back to the cars. 
easy, right. easy hour and a half, mile and a half downhill. Well, the way we walk. The way we walk, it'll be two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So we bid you all a fun to do and hope to see you again on Windows to the Wild. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Willem. <laughs> always a pleasure. <laughs> no, it's not always a pleasure. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>